Okay, let's do a story so far while it's still clear in my mind what's happened and that I should do it, which is the big question. I forget it otherwise <coughs> too many times because I don't remember. Hey, I just loaded up. Uh, the first day of the battle, the French 3rd Division came in, shoved the Spaniards out of Quintana Los Prados, and a line uh, sort of formed up here uh, in front of uh, this hill, etc. And that uh, 3rd Division, I hope I said Division the first time, uh, was repulsed back. Overnight, the armies recovered. Uh, the uh, Del Norte, or whatever, yeah, De, De Norte. Um, why is it Del Taco then? Uh, fell back here. It had taken a lot of hits. It's sort of the elite unit of the four, of the um, Galician army, which had been holding Quintana and took the brunt of the attack against it. Overnight, most of the rest of the French force, well. Really, all the rest of the French forces came in, and an attack began at dawn. Um, launched, so the Spaniards moved their way back up to Quintana after having driven uh, the French Third Division back. But a uh, coordinated assault at dawn, all three divisions hitting. They drove the Spaniards back basically to this line fairly easily. It wasn't trivial. They took uh, significant losses, especially that French 3rd Division is wrecked and pretty beaten up at this point. And the 1st Division is not far behind it. <coughs> the Spaniards are not in any, any good shape either, however. Uh, although, after they were pushed back a couple of times, they managed to form up a line. The French victor is going to issue some orders to pull the second division back so that both armies have a chance to, to recover a little bit. There might or might not be time for another assault. Uh, it really comes down to a question of you know how the random rolls work in terms of recovering the armies. I don't feel like one division can take on what the Spaniards have. If it comes to checking victory at this point, I would say this is a Spanish victory. Uh, I'm going to have to, you know, it's not, it's not going to be a massive one, uh, but that, that would be my guess. Uh, we'd have to figure out the numbers to be sure, and I don't really want to do that. Because I don't feel like commanders are counting up points, you know. Uh, it just, it feels more like, yeah, you count up the points at the end to see... Do they align with, you know, how you feel like the battle went <coughs> more than um, that sort of what I consider sort of the squad leader mentality, which is, oh, I need just one more to win this. And honestly, a lot of those older games, I, f I feel like people are, are constantly, you know, well, if I do this, then I'm safe and I can get that binary win loss. I don't view games as binary win loss. Anyway, we're getting into into philosophy rather of games and victory points rather than anything else. So uh, we're probably going to enter into a dead period of the game right now, and we'll see whether or not there's anything else, or if I just basically keep coming on saying, "Yep, everybody's recovering." Although, one of the nice things is, if I'm doing recovery terms, although, as I mentioned on the last video, it's getting kind of painful for the Spaniards in particular, but once everything's withdrawn and everything's, uh, you know, recovered morale and whatnot, then it becomes fairly trivial. Everything can recover, so I just kind of roll the dice, figure out where the commander is on each turn, and kind of cheat a little bit in that way uh, to bring back forces. But yeah, it, it it can move pretty quickly once once the forces are not in close contact. I don't think I'm going to get any more fighting in. Um, I just got to say I, I've I spent an hour uh, game time, not real time. Maybe fifteen minutes real time. I don't know. <laughs> um, to get through that hour and. 
you know, Victor issued some orders to these guys. Well, they're on a D4. It's going to it's going to take a couple of turns for them to to accept their orders and pull back. Other units are trying to recover. And the French are in better shape than the Spaniards because they have quite this large tail back here, all of which needs to do recovery. The Spanish are kind of pinned by this uh, second division up here, which has got orders to pull back and fall into no orders. Meanwhile, the Spaniards, Blake is moving back and forth between his headquarters, issuing orders anew to defend this line. <coughs> I'm taking kind of a view of, if I give somebody a geographical defend order, they're not bolted down. It's only in the default defense that they're bolted down. I don't think that's the intention. You know, it's weird because there's the old system and the new system, and I'm so used to the old system that I may be missing things here. Um... See, general orders, let's see if it says it has to be bolted down, does not allow for defending in places allowed as well as in local counterattacks, slowly falling back along a predefined line. Ah, so what I looked at as a complex order could have been done under general orders. So the way I'm reading it is, you now have the kind of defensive orders that I wanted, which is, you're not bolted in place. And no orders, you still are, but that's okay. And default defense, you still are, I guess. Um, I feel like those are a little too restrictive, though. Like, it seems like you should be able to change your center a little bit anyhow. Uh, but I guess if you don't have any kind of orders, the default defense... The default defense is kind of a, well, I got to a point and called off my attack, and I am stopping here, and if anything goes wrong, I'm out of here. But anything going wrong, the only thing that can go wrong is somebody steps, uh, you know, so, somebody steps on where the commander is. And if they don't, well, you gotta move your units around if you wanna, like, regain stragglers. You gotta go to the commander, and you gotta send other units elsewhere on the line. He's the only person, you know, who can give you the bonus of recovery. And it just feels so, so gamey and wrong uh, that I would rather kind of... Hey, those units can't really move. You know, just try to remember that. I don't know. <clears throat> Anyhow. Uh, so... Apparently I was wrong. You are allowed more complex defend orders than I had, which means some of those Spanish units that went flying back uh, at various times didn't have to because they weren't actually subject to uh, um, core stoppage. Oh, well. You know, uh, I, I don't think I've ever played this version 3.0 right entirely. I may have when I first got it, but I highly doubt that. Simply because it's too much like, you know, it, it, it's the same game in a lot of ways, but there are so many little differences that it's kind of like, I can't remember the stuff. I, I, I can't allow the stuff from the older versions to even come into play because there's things that, just aren't what they, they seem to be. Anyhow, uh, we've gotten that hour out of the way. I'm low on tea. Uh, otherwise, I could probably get through the game, you know, in an hour or so easily. Just rolling up uh, recoveries and trying to figure out, hey, can the French afford to attack yet? Can they afford to attack yet? And the answer is almost certainly going to be no. You know, it's going to get to about here before they can launch one at the earliest, I would guess using preconceptions from the older versions again. So let's say it gets to about here and an attack order uh, is underway. Well, under the old version, that didn't mean much. You'd move up, you'd start exchanging, and it was a very attritional kind of combat for the most part. The same thing happens in CWB. Um, I guess... Other players could be more violent than I am and charge into hexes more often. Uh, I found that that didn't tend to work terribly well. Like, I tended to wreck my, my attack 
stacking units that way, whereas a more cautious approach allowed me to trade fire if I had better quality units. But in this one, we saw how dramatic the results were. Now that was in a village where, you know, you have follow through attacks and whatnot. But uh, it, it's quite possible to really break a line fairly fast in this. And even one, so, so there's two things in, in play here. One is the Spanish line is pretty damn weak, actually. <laughs> if I were the Spaniards, I would be taking this opportunity to get the hell out of Dodge. But I would have taken that opportunity the night before. And the victory conditions are such that they reward me for sticking around and for bleeding a little bit more, which I don't really believe in. You know, I mean, my understanding is, look, if you're going to give up the ground, why keep fighting for it? <laughs> the only question being, can I disengage? But if the French pull back a little bit, the answer is yes. I, I can disengage very safely. Anyway, um, and, and then the other, uh, my God, how many levels do they have to put in? You know, <laughs> it's very steep terrain. Um, but under the, under the new system, it, it would actually be possible to, to breach the line and push forward and grab, you know, more victory points, especially if I uh, ignore this side and just try to, if I ignore one flank or the other, it, it kind of doesn't matter which, um, and just try to punch through, it would be quite possible. So this would be the more valuable to get one, two, three, four of the victory points, which is huge, you know. Uh, without the withdraw, without the I'm withdrawing option, uh, it really doesn't make sense not to. Now, on the other side, though, the Spanish actually get points for withdrawing. Still, they don't need that special. Uh, they don't need this uh, the special order that I got. So let me let me see what the victory is. So the Spanish get one for every three infantry brigades exited. And that worked out to a few more points than what you get for exiting if you decide to leave, which feels kind of weird to me too. You know, it's like, ah. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, the Blake quits early. Yeah. It gets one per division versus one to every three brigades. Uh, I guess it depends on what's left, you know. And there's kind of not a, it's not unwrecked or anything like that. Um, but as things stand right now, I'm getting points for each of those victory hexes, which is worth what I would get for withdrawals. And if I... If I have a truly wrecked force, like the reserve is in such bad shape, I might order that to run away. Of course, I'd need three brigades, and it's only two, so, you know. Uh, the cav and the artillery are worth one each, though. So those, given, given how valuable they've been, I, I probably want to order them. Uh, of course, I can't get the... I can't, because they've got to stay within range of the headquarters. So, no, that's not an option. Um, and here's the big thing. If I don't hold the line, not only do the French get the victory points for the map, which was slightly more than the Blake quits early option is for withdrawing your entire army, and probably, probably about equal, but I don't know. You know, probably pretty close still um, to <clears throat> what happened if Blake pulls out and gives up ground late in the battle. Now, the optimal situation, of course, is I stand in my line here, I turn around and I leave, and the French don't capture victory hexes because of the command rolls, that they're just not able to take them. That, that would be kind of the optimal situation because what that means is, oh, look, they didn't occupy it, you know, that night or whatever. So, you know, maybe they spend another night out in the cold or something. Oh, they got this town. What the hell? Um, 
they spent another night out in the cold deployed. They didn't get the victory hexes simply because the commander didn't order them to take them in time. And I, I can't see any strategic value to, well, I guess they didn't get them until the next day. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> to me, the pursuit is reflected with that three victory points for getting, getting um, a division off the board for the French. The pursuit shouldn't really apply to, yeah, I captured all of these hexes because like, it just, the victory conditions just don't reflect a reality. And that's so often the case in games. You know, if I pull out and leave, why are the French getting victory points for the territory? And fine, you know, they won the field, they should get something for it, but why aren't they getting that something for it after I leave if they didn't happen to march, you know, an hour earlier in, into the town, you know, what, what does that hour mean? I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm growing kind of uh, <laughs> discouraged. Hey, uh, an hour later in game time, quite a bit later in real time because I put out another video and had a lot of trouble with my camera. Uh, for those of you who don't watch my non-gaming videos, um, all that trouble convinced me to take a shot and order another camera. Uh, I hope I have better luck than with my last supposed Averio, which doesn't use any of the stuff that I need, you know, that I have with these other cameras, and is problematic because of that. Uh, I'm hoping this one does. I, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't look as new. Um, I had an option to buy a really, really old one that looks like my first of the Averios, which was this thing. Um, now this works with all the components uh, that I've got, you know, the same as my other Averios do, but it was, it was an okay camera and, and fine for gaming, but uh, it didn't have as much magnification. And like all of them, it kind of broke. <laughs> and of course, I can't just throw them away. I don't know why. <coughs> um, I am hoping the one that I got is actually a little older than this one. But uh, the one that, you know, the really old one was like $5 less, beat up looking. And I'm just like, uh, no. Uh, whereas the one that I'm, I ordered, the pictures of it, it looks like it's in pretty good shape physically at least and um, of course you know <laughs> if it's not at least 10 years old I probably have a problem um, I saw the newer ones newer even than than the one that I can't use uh, support you know using them as webcams which is kind of cool I mean webcams existed back then I don't know why video cameras weren't uh, at least this brand weren't supporting it very odd uh, but that's been a problem for me where I have to like patch something together with my phone um, and I have a, another interview stupidly early in the morning again uh, this time 7 30 instead of 7 to because uh, nobody there's no phone numbers in play <laughs> uh, they didn't send me one and so I asked for either a phone number or a meeting request um, but it means I'll wake up at six and then go back to sleep probably multiple times over the day. Anyway, to the game itself, what the hell? Uh, not much happening, just recovery. The Spaniards are recovering surprisingly quickly. I, I, I had forgotten, and I, I don't think it may have affected a couple of my die rolls, but not many because the early recovery stage, I did take it into account. But there's a special rule in this where all Spanish units get a plus one for no orders. So even if I've got units that are in defend or something like that, they're still gathering up uh, crap. Of course, some of the Spanish units are D and E morale, which have very little chance of, uh, 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 of recovering, but that's okay. I mean, no orders 
gives me a plus one if I've got a good leader with them, which in some cases I do. Uh, we're at plus two, so we're at 50-50 of getting, getting a box back. Uh, and you can see there aren't that many completely destroyed units. Of course, the forces overall are weak enough that I'm just stacking the formerly destroyed units under other units uh, to give them a little bit more staying, well, not really staying power, but a little bit more meat. Um, it helps when you're hit with close combat. It gives you a modifier um, on your morale check if you're significantly smaller than the opponent, like half size or less. Uh, the French not getting as much, but still getting okay. And now the second division's gotten itself into place. And remember, the French are in no order status, so with better morale and everything, but they're just not collecting up very well. Let me show you. It's not too bad, uh, but the third is still beaten up. That one unit will not rally. It gets no bonus for rallying and, and coming back to the battle because I'm in no order status. So, you know, it hasn't gotten a chance to recover because it's just cowering somewhere. I'm uh, going to pause. I don't know if I'm coming back tonight uh, because my addiction within an hour or so is going to call me in and... I don't know. I've been averaging a couple hours of sleep a night for the past, this is the third day. I need to fall asleep, but I have a, an interview coming up. But I came up, squeezed off uh, the French 1 p.m. turn. I just don't think they're gonna be ready in time uh, to launch any kind of effective attack. Uh, I'll, I'll keep going because the cost is so low, but I'm looking at their forces and they're just not recovering enough to be worth launching anything. Um, you know, the, the attack's gonna stop as soon as it starts. I did finally get this thing to rally, though. Well, the Spaniards, with their crappy morale, are recovering rather rapidly, comparatively. They're doing a better job, and it, it all really comes down to uh, the Espinosa Stragglers rule, which, you know, is giving them an automatic no orders, even though I didn't want to be in no orders. Uh, the French are in no orders, so they should be doing okay as well with their better morale. They're just not getting the rolls. I don't, I don't know what's happening. There's also more Spanish units, which means they can recover more uh, of their stragglers. They're, they're a much larger army, so that that probably is also factoring into it. I'm just, you know, I'm getting probably a reasonable proportion of <coughs> uh, replacements on the French side. It's just, I'm only rolling on, you know, half as many units, basically. I might as well just pack it in if the French aren't going to attack. Um, I'm starting to write orders for the French. I just finished the 2 p.m. turn. I'm having a hard time coming up and playing. Um, in part because I know that, you know, this is just tedious work and it's not going to get me anywhere. But I started writing orders for a 3 p.m. attack. By that point, the second division might be in, you know, pretty good shape. The other units might be close enough to decent shape that they can fight. Uh, but, yeah. Um, honestly, I should not be doing this, but <laughs> it's all I can think of. 2.30, I'm at the 3 p.m. The first division that I gave orders to just accepted them. So they're going to begin their attack at this point. The second uh, the first division, which is the second division I gave orders to, uh, didn't accept its orders right away. And so we may start seeing an echelon attack involuntarily. Um, more of a, a, a piecemeal attack happening. And I still haven't given orders to the 3rd Division yet. That'll be happening this turn. I'm a little too tired to want to actually uh, start fighting. But that terrain may be ugly enough that I can't really engage. I don't, I don't think I can get close enough. So I'll, I'll push on this, this third turn in a row. <laughs> just sitting here playing, which is pretty impressive for me, even with this kind of slow play, you know, almost nothing happening during the play, because I almost always wander away, but 
I just can't fucking sleep. It's you know, like five in the morning. I gotta go dancing tonight, but whatever. The hierarchy of the French command took up their orders. These guys are in just a supporting order. They're a little too beaten up, I think. Although, honestly, I thought the second was the one in good condition. It's the first that's in good condition. Second's okay at this point. They got a lot of permanent losses on them. Oh no, the first has a lot of permanent losses. Second has more recoverable things that I would have liked to have brought into play. But the battle will be ended at the point at which they could have recovered. So there's basically no recovery happening anymore. I may have cheated a little bit and given the army of Astorius uh, a chance to recover that they shouldn't have gotten because this guy moved up far enough to prevent that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I definitely got a recovery there. I got a recovery on another one, I think, but I don't know which one of the units because I can't paw through the units. They're, it's just, that's too much of a pain. Um, somehow, I don't know. <laughs> and at this point, I don't know which unit did recover. I, I thought I was far enough away with the historians. I thought these guys were slower. I gotta stop at this point, however. There's no way I can handle an actual attack with as tired as I am. I could kind of blindly go through the mechanical aspects. This isn't the biggest attack in the game. I don't know what is. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, this is certainly the largest. I don't know by how much, but uh, yeah, this turn, basically every single hex down the line is being hit. This one's got disordered because of the artillery fire. It was effective this time. Instead of taking uh, casualties on the actual unit, I chose to take them off skirmishers. I usually don't do that, but because skirmishers are so valuable in, in a longer battle or whatever. But at this point, I need to preserve the unit for the actual hit. It's disordered. It probably won't make it, but if it makes it in, it will break the Spaniards, which is what the desired goal obviously is. Elsewhere, some of these guys cross the stream, that's why they're shaken. But yeah, this is gonna be a miserable set of attacks. I, it's just, you know, the all close combat option uh, factor that fits into um, how this game is supposed to be, uh, well, how, how you must attack in version three is just so much more cumbersome than the old a historical, I'll move up near you and trade shots, you know. As you can see, the net result is not good for the French. Um, sure, I blew some holes in the Spanish line, but the entire sort of French center has fallen back uh, in route. Okay, so what happened? Here it was successful driving Spaniards back. Here it was a failure. Here it was another success. Over here, we had one of those situations where we wiped out the Spanish force, but routed on taking the space. Um, and then across here, we were routed. This was kind of interesting because it wasn't an actual loss. It, it was a shootout, but the shootout routed us. Uh, in addition, the French lost two of their three divisional commanders, uh, Ruffin and Lapice, on this turn. <laughs> So it was pretty damn bloody. Um, I have a little bit of recovery to do. Got to look around. So like this guy actually gets to recover because this guy is facing this way. Um, and then the routes get a chance. Damn tiny counters uh, that are glued together pieces that I made. And this is why I don't PNP. Crap all over the place. You know, I tried picking up a stack, it flipped all over. I can fix it, but it's just... I can't get my fingernails under them right. The tweezers don't really work on them. Not, nothing really works well. And my hands are just not as dexterous as maybe they were once upon a time. Although I'm sure that these have always been a pain for me. This, You know, I, I, there's a reason I didn't like playing with these. I've got a bunch of games I PNP'd. I uh, made new counters for the entire Central Front series. Uh, or, or no, for the two uh, Don Bao and what 
whatever the other one is. The two that didn't get made with the correct roles. <laughs> and, uh... I mean, I'm sure they're going to be a fucking mess, too. At least they'll be normal size counters, but I made them with uh, basically normal um, cardboard, you know, from cardboard boxes I cut up as the counters. Now, they're very nice, thick counters, but they've got air in them. I, I don't know how they're going to work, but of course, you know, anything you glue together is going to fall apart. Uh, anyway, I, I wanted to get stick to the game, but... This is just so fucking obnoxious. Spanish turn, they tried to uh, reorder their line and position themselves a little better. The French skirmishers did a real number on them. That's where you see these uh, uh, poor morale states showing up. And got like two more turns. Um, I think I'm going to call off the attack or maintain it only at a very low level. For example, these guys, these guys could stay up here and, and fire their skirmishers if I bring the leader back up. The leader ran, otherwise they have to get back in command. Um, they could just back the units up, that would actually maybe even be safer, and just leave the skirmishers up there to plink, because they might get a break in the line that way. Um, here, I've got enough oomph, I could actually keep going. And I've got the high ground, which is important towards forcing them. You know, when you've got a bunch of troops that are all bad morale fighting each other, and that's really what's happened because, you know, units are broken and whatnot, uh, that high ground becomes really, really important because it's not so much, can I, uh, you know, can I survive and, and want to keep attacking as, well, will the enemy break? Because if they break, we're good, you know? <laughs> As long as we're above them. <coughs> so that, that's kind of a, a nice situation there. I might be able to arrange that. Um, so here by the rules, this would be lower. And common sense agrees with me that this slope is going down continuously. Although there is some point here where we're talking more flat, which is what the actual hex grain shows. So I don't know which way to read it. You know, it's like, do I follow the rules explicitly or do I do what I've kind of been doing, which is cheating it a little bit. Um, and here I'm gonna follow the rules explicitly because I don't know. There's definitely a downward slope here and there's no upward slope going in the opposite direction. I mean, you really have to kind of start codifying stuff like that to make this kind of um, this kind of map make as much sense as the old layer cake maps did. Sure, it gives a lot more detail on, on the terrain. I don't really like that. I find myself hating looking up, you know, having to count the number of lines and then, oh, well, it's more than three. What are the actual numbers for that, for this type of unit and everything? It's just so fucking obnoxious. Whereas with the old ones, there was elevation change, which generally had no, no real effect. There was, you know, slope. And then there was like ridges and crests and things like that. And ridges and crests were fairly rare in most games. There would be a lot of them here though. So the map would be really, really ugly. <laughs> in a lot of ways. And there'd be a lot of different colors because there's so many different elevations in play. But anyway, there already is a lot of different colors. Uh, I don't know if I have enough in me to finish this before I go dancing. Well, before I go play my addiction and then go dancing because I've got to get my addiction in before I, I go. Otherwise, I miss an important facet at the beginning of each, or at the beginning of their day. This is hosted in... Now, this isn't actually the beginning of their day either. I, it's just weird. You get a bonus at one point, and then the day switches at another. And I don't know. It's Sunday. Sunday night. Doing my Doom Tower crawl and raid, and... Uh, this is the first time that I could convince myself to pull myself away during waking time. And I sleep a lot now uh, from, from my addiction. I come up here 
and I roll the core attack stoppage. Now, the French lost two of their, well, divisional attack stoppage, I guess, two of their divisional commanders. And the first one, um, I rolled a 10, so he gets to keep going. But the second division, I rolled not a 9 or higher. I don't remember what it was, a 6 or something. That's going to get an emergency uh, core, uh, an emergency uh, withdrawal. And the second is these guys who happen to be in the best position, the best condition. The other two divisions, I can fall back because the leaders are, uh, you know, behind. I don't see an attack working. The third is so beaten up and the first is pretty close to yeah it's it's pretty bad shape too really the second one's the only one in any good di in any good shape so i'm going to call it right here on the bright side i got me uh my new camera and it looks like other than color it looks like all the others i've i've opened it up and um uh, you know every everything seems to be right I, there's no charger with it but that's okay uh, you know, I've got plenty of chargers for these guys, and at least the one from this one works. So, um, I'm hoping <laughs> I have a working camera there. Uh, the color, color is very different. These others have been black or maybe a very, very dark blue. Uh, so, I'll calculate out the victory. I think this is going to be a fairly uh, solid Spanish victory, though. Yeah, uh, not good at all. Um, nine points for the Spaniards, five of them from the hexes the French never got. Uh, two of them for wrecking a French division. Now this isn't permanently wrecked, but that's good enough uh, in this scenario if you, if you smashed a French division. And of course it could recover overnight, so you know. It's kind of weird, it's like an arbitrary stop point. If I haven't la hadn't launched this final attack, those points wouldn't have happened, and in fact the next two for a permanently wrecked brigade wouldn't have happened either, I believe. I believe that happened on that last little attack. Um, is there any withdrawal fire? There might be, if the artillery here is still up, I don't know. But I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so yeah, that's nine points for them. The French, all they got is for hexes. They only get points for permanently wrecked Spanish divisions. And I failed to wreck anything permanently. The Spaniards were able to shift out the Del Norte, uh, you know, when it was beat up. And really, you know, <laughs> their units ran. <laughs> They're not great morale. They left. Um, so that's, uh, that's the point total for this. I would call this a massive victory for Blake, at least in terms of victory points. What does it actually mean? Well, the Spanish still have to leave. You know, <laughs> uh, the only question was, could the French bag the, these two armies um, with, you know, a core, or could they chase them on quicker where they, they don't get any kind of delaying action? But there's not really much use to a delaying action in this situation. The reason the Spaniards turned and fought was they were too fucking tired to keep going. So now they're running again. The French are chasing them. There's very, I have very little um, confidence in the whole, hey, if the Spanish withdraw from here, you know, they get more points for each unit they get to withdraw from there. I didn't pull any out. I probably should have. I should have at least gotten the cav out. That would be worth an extra point. Yeah, that thing's fucking useless here. <coughs> and the artillery is pretty damn close. Yeah, being only a two-point gun, it's not going to do much. And that was another point. Um, the other units, I'd have to retreat. I'd have to pull quite a few out uh, to get points for. And... The idea of the French being able to pursue, well, that makes a little bit more sense. Like, I, I don't know, some of that makes sense. Like, okay, if the Spanish leave, they're gonna be giving up the victory points on the map, but they actually held the map uh, for whatever that matters. You know, it, the two should be about equal. They're not. If the French take the map, they win the battle. And you know, the French, the Spanish withdrawal rules, whether or not they have the option, don't make much difference. 
Uh, so that's the end of Espinosa. No more of these print and plays. Uh, <laughs> this is the last one of them. But I do have the two scenarios left in Talavera to hit. And we're going to do something else first. At least one something else, maybe more than one, who knows. Uh, but just because I've been having such a hard time coming up here and playing these, um, I feel like, I don't know. Um, you know, when I first got back into gaming uh, more than a decade ago, uh, and, and started doing these vids. I was a lot more excited about the tactical stuff. And now, honestly, almost all of the, the wargamey type stuff, it's just becoming a chore to come up and do. And I, I don't know why, you know? I, I don't feel terribly different in playing it. I just, I'm having a harder time, you know, uh, sparking, sparking that initiative or, or, or overcoming my, uh, my generals case of the slows um whereas you know and, and it's always been the case that the comfort games the 18xx's the britannia's and stuff like that those were always easier to reach for and play at certain times um but i think i've like gotten worse at being able to uh play through uh you know, the heavier stuff. And, and certainly I've gotten really, really horrible at coping with where Euros have gone to, you know. But I don't think that is a change. <laughs> I just think I've, I've lost my, uh, uh, any, any level of tolerance for that. Anyway, this is actually kind of an interesting battle. Just the situation and everything was kind of neat. Um, if it weren't for my crappy uh, print and play version of it, I might have had more fun with it. Um, the terrain is such a fucking pain, though. I, I do not like. Uh, I do not like where they went with the uh, the layering, the the uh, many 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 different elevation layers, and counting the slope lines to determine how steep a slope is. It makes perfect sense. It's a great way to represent it all. It's just it requires so much looking up. And, and dealing with, um, it, it just requires more mental mechanical type aspects in terms of coping with the map itself. Um, I don't know. All right, up it goes.